Uh, this is the duly advertised meeting of the Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals. In our capacity, we hear petitions for relief from the strict provisions of our city ordinance. In matters of this type, the decision of this board is final. We respect that it does not go to the mayor or city council for any further action. If you disagree with our decision, you do have recourse in a court of record. We also hear petitions for variations of land use. In matters of this type, we act as an advisory committee to the Mayor and City Council, making a recommendation either for or against it. Final decision on land use is made by the Mayor and the City Council. Would the Chairman or the Secretary please call the roll? Ms. Stafford? Present. Mr. Alessio? Here. Mr. McCauley? Here. Mr. Vactree? I'm here. Mr. Riggs? Mr. Hennessy. Present. Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, the next item on our agenda is approval of the minutes from May 21st, uh, 2020 Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Motion would be in order. I'll make a motion. I'll make a comment here on the item about the uh, Essington Street used car dealer. It seems to me the report in the minutes of that meeting are confusing, if not wrong. They state that um, um, the vote, the, the uh, recommendation was approved. It was approved with uh, then two uh, members voting for it and three against. That seems to me is not approval. It seems to me that to state correctly what happened. Okay, uh, we will review that and um, we'll bring these minutes back to the next meeting for uh, review. Bob, I assume that was you. Uh, do you want to make a motion to approve the minutes except for that one item to be reviewed later? Yeah, just make a motion then to that effect. I just did. I hereby move that we approve the, the minutes with the exception of that one item. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Second. Yeah. Call the roll, please. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Vactree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Stafford? Mr. Hennessy. Aye. And Mr. Chairman, just for the record, um, that item was petition 2020-20. For the record, thank you. Okay, uh, next item on our agenda. Oh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we do have two cases that have been withdrawn. Uh, petition 2020-23, um, and that is 1101 North Broadway Street and also 2020-24, uh, and that was also for 1101 North Broadway Street. Both of those petitions have been withdrawn. Thank you. Uh, we will go a little out of order here. Um, the next item will be 2020-26, and that is a variation to allow a tractor trailer parking and storage area located at 3350 Shanahan Road. Uh, their request is for a variation. Uh, the petitioner is requesting a variation to allow additional truck and trailer parking that exceeds the allowed accessory parking spaces along and adjacent to the two longest sides of the structure. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will make the final decision on this particular request. Under site-specific information, the 72-acre subject site comprises one lot, and that is lot five, in the Keats Home Business Center subdivision. The existing zoning is I-2, that's General Industrial Joliet. In addition to permanent uses allowed in the I-2 district, Lot 5 is also allowed um, barging and transloading from the Des Plaines River, as was allowed within the approved development agreement um, 
in 2016. Surrounding zoning land use and character to the north is industrial I-2. To the south is the Des Plaines River, uh, also with I-2 zoning. To the east is industrial I-2, as is to the west. Under applicable regulations, uh, section 47-17.17, paragraph 29, off-street parking regulations. General discussion. The approval of the requested variation on truck and trailer parking will allow the Ketone Industrial Center to be competitive in attracting and retaining industrial users within the park that need additional truck and trailer parking spaces. The additional truck and trailer parking area will allow the site to add 774 additional spaces. Its proposed location is at the south portion of the subdivision, which is undeveloped at this time. The barging and transloading operation that was allowed on this site will be continued to be permitted. Paving and landscaping will be required as per the city subdivision regulations and zoning ordinance. A payment in lieu of taxes will be required as per the terms of a future ordinance. The funds collected from the pilot will be utilized for adjacent City of Joliet Street maintenance. If approved, the additional parking area will only be allowed for overload parking uh, within the industrial park. The variation to allow the additional truck and trailer parking area will not cause any negative impacts to the surrounding area. If the zoning board desires to approve the variation, the following conditions uh, would be included. Number one, that the additional truck and trailer parking area will only be allowed uh, for overflow parking uh, within the industrial park. Number two, the additional truck and trailer parking area shall be required to make a payment in lieu of taxes as per the terms of a future agreement. And we would also add to that that the payment, um, the uh, payment in lieu of taxes uh, will, should be um, earmarked for city roadway maintenance improvements. Number three, that a landscape plan be submitted as part of the building permit uh, that meets city ordinances. And finally, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use permit. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President. Speaking into that other mic, uh, mic, uh, we're having trouble hearing you. Having trouble? Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let me let me uh, kind of just start with that. Okay, Mr. Torrey's saying something. Uh, I don't know if Mr. Jackson is hearing me or what. Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah. Yeah. yeah we had discussed that. I guess I'm addressing this to Jim. We had discussed in the meeting that we had with you that the pilot payment uh, for people inside the park. We know there's one tenant right now would be a half a pilot payment for those currently inside the park. And anybody who would use the additional parking from outside the park would be a full pilot payment. Yes, yes. Um, so I talked with Kyle, you're, um, you know, who you're representing uh, for Ketone Subdivision, and he understands that what you applied for was just this expanded accessory parking for people within the park. If you want to allow for parking outside of the park um, for uh, truckers that don't you know, have uh, uh, a warehousing or distribution uh, use there in the park, then you need to apply for a special use permit. Um, that is not what you applied for. You applied for the variance. A uh, special use permit would not only go to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but also to the City Council. So um, I had a discussion and traded emails with Kyle on that, and he understood 
that and was fine with that at this time. Yeah. I think we'll have to ask for a continuance because we'll have to get this. Mr. Schumacher's not available. I, um, I don't, uh, I'm not saying Mr. Tory's incorrect, but that's not my understanding. So you want to take? I think we'll have to table it because it, uh, there's no reason to take this to the commission unless there's an agreement with, with the, you know, an understanding with the client in the city. I thought we had one, but apparently we don't. So we better uh, check that out. So the request of the petitioner for the tabling motion. Wait, you want um, uh, one month tabling? Yeah, one month. Till the next meeting. Yeah, till the next uh, ZBA meeting. Motion would be in order. Motion to table agenda item 2020-26 to the June or to the July zoning board meeting. Do we have a second? Okay, now I can try and get him on the phone right now and see if he would. Uh, all right, why, why don't we skip this right now and let me see if I can get him on the phone and see if I can clarify this, okay? Why don't you go ahead to the next item, if that's all right. Um, I think. You want to withdraw your motion? Yeah, we've got to yeah. withdraw the motion. Okay, uh, I'd like to withdraw the motion to table agenda item 2020 26. Um, yeah, pending right. pending of a uh, contact. Yeah, let, yeah. let me let me uh, let get him on the phone. I'll be right back. I know that I'll get him. On. We only have one other item on the agenda. Yeah, I'll be right. I'll be, I'll get him. He's he's available by phone. So, okay, thank you. Want to proceed, Mr. Secretary? Yes. Um, our next item would be twenty twenty dash. Oh, I'm sorry. 2019-18. 2019-18. That is, uh, the applicant is Chris Enright of Christopher Enright Architects. Uh, owner is Menards Properties Division. Location, 2526 West Jefferson Street. Their request is for an extension of a special use permit. A special use permit to allow the construction of a tire repair facility on one of the vacant Menards Walmart shopping centers outlines. As a condition of approval, construction was to have begun within 180 days. A letter is attached by the petitioner explaining that due to unforeseen delays in market conditions and the COVID-19 virus, work on the site had to be slightly delayed. Expectations by the petitioner indicate that the work should start by fall 2020. If approved, the extension would allow a new construction start date by December 15th of 2020. Planning staff is in favor of this request. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decision on the extension request. Um, the original staff report is attached. And um, if the proposed special use extension is approved by the Zoning Board of Appeals, the following conditions would still be included. Number one, that a landscape plan be submitted and approved that meets the requirements of the city's landscape ordinance. Uh, number two, uh, the special use granted shall terminate and lapse unless a building permit or certificate of occupancy is obtained not later than 180 days of the effective date of uh, an approved ordinance. And number three, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use. And that completes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Petitioner online? Yes, he is. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm uh, I must swear you in. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present us the truth on the penalty of law? Yes, sir. Thank you. Name and address. Okay, do you have any comments, sir? Uh, the only comment uh, that I'd like to make is that uh, we intend to obtain a building permit uh, by late this summer, uh, early fall 2020. Uh, the construction on the site will likely not start until first of 2021. Okay, is there any comments or questions by the board? If there are no comments by the board, do we have anyone online that wishes to speak in favor or in opposition? Anyone know? 
Uh, there are no callers um, on this uh, petition, Mr. Chairman. As there are none, the Chair will close the petition to the floor and ask the Board for discussion and a motion. Motion would be in order. Motion to approve. Yeah. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Would, would you name it? Who was that, please? It sounded like it was Bob and Chuck both second at the same time. Secretary, pull the board, please. You said Chuck. Okay. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nuntree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is Petition number 2020-21. Applicant in this matter is Jeffrey Gove, who is the managing partner. Location 1590 North Larkin Avenue, and their request is a variation. The petitioner is requesting a variation to allow two main buildings on one lot and on, and on required off-street parking from 1,624 spaces to 1,221 spaces in order to construct a 4,600 square foot retail building at the existing commercial plaza site. The Zoning Board of Appeals will make the final decision on this case. Under site-specific information, the 10.3 acre site is zone B3, that's General Business Joliet, and currently contains the vacant ultra food building. A VASA fitness facility and plasma center are proposed for the vacant grocery store space. The subject site is contained within lots two and four in St. Francis subdivision, which was recorded in 1955. A variation of required parking for the shopping plaza was approved in 1985 that allowed overall parking at one space for every 200 square feet of building area. Surrounding zoning land use and character to the north and south is commercial with B3 General Business Joliet Zoning. To the east is institutional with R2 single family Joliet Zoning and to the west is commercial B3 General Business Joliet. Applicable regulations, section 47-17.1, paragraph five, general regulations. Under general discussion, the approval of the requested variation would allow the future construction of a three-unit commercial building within the Northridge Plaza Commercial Shopping Center. One of the tenant spaces uh, is earmarked for a Starbucks coffee with a drive through The other tenant spaces are not known at this time. The proposed building will be constructed with brick as the primary exterior material and wood siding as a secondary material which meets the requirements of the city's non-residential design standards. The drive-through has been reviewed by the Joliet traffic engineer and it meets the requirements for approval. The reduction of parking to 1,221 spaces for a total shopping center building area of 324,804 square feet, including the new building, should not create a parking issue at the site since VASA Fitness and the Plaza Center are not high volume traffic generators. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Petitioner on line? Yeah, <clears throat> this is John Grantor. Can you guys hear me okay? Uh, I must swear you in, sir. We swear the evidence you're about to present us the truth under the penalty of law. I do. And your name and address again. John Bradshaw, I'm a licensed architect with Chamber and Theodore in 2454 East Dempster Street, Springs, Illinois. Thank you. Any comments you'd like to make, sir? Uh, no, I would be glad to answer any questions that anybody has. What 
what is it exactly that uh, you guys do there? Is that similar to that uh, plasma operation on Jefferson Street here in town? Um, is your question specifically for the proposed use other than the BASA and that existing building? Well, I'm wondering what exactly the BASA operation is and if the other two aren't known yet, that would be subject to zoning whenever they were occupied. So let's just stick with uh, the main so operation. Yeah, there's, uh, there's two separate issues, I guess. Uh, one, the large existing building on site will be occupied by a BASA bot, fitness center, so it's effectively like lifetime fitness. Um, so they have uh, workout equipment and locker rooms and things like that. And then the other tenant in that large space is a BioLife plasma services. So there are people that would come in and donate their blood to uh, get the plasma. Which these days is urgent. Not that it isn't always. And that's separate from the uh, the proposed building, which is about 7,800 square feet, which would now Starbucks in two future tenants. Okay, thank you. Any comments by the board? No questions or comments? Is there anyone online who wish to speak in favor or opposition? Chair closes the petition to the floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. I would move that we approve this petition. Second. We have a motion and then a second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Mr. Nactree? Aye. Mr. Riz? Aye. Ms. Sapper? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Just for clarification, was that Mr. Nocturne that made the motion? Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, our next petition is 2020-22. The applicant and owner is Ryan Tague. Location 3207 Tina Circle. And his request is a variation. The petitioner is requesting a variation of a required rear yard setback from 25 feet to 21 feet and 11 inches in order to construct a covered rear yard deck. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decision on this request. <clears throat> Under site specific information, the irregular shaped 14,777 square foot lot currently contains a single family house with a concrete driveway. The house recently had a wood deck that the homeowners wish to replace. The property is zoned R1, single family residential. Surrounding zoning land use and character, the property in question is surrounded by other single family properties that all have R1 zoning. Applicable regulations, 47-5.4, yard and lot requirements in an R1 zoning district. General discussion. The requested rear yard variation will allow the owner to construct a new covered deck off the back of the home. The irregular shape of the lot and the angled nature of the property line creates the hardship to meet the 25 foot setback at one corner of the, new, of the newly proposed deck. Most of the deck will meet the required setback. An uncovered paver patio is also part of this proposed project, the patio would have no setback issue. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Is the petitioner online? Mr. Tag, are you online? I am on the phone. Can you hear me OK? Yes, I must swear you in. Do you swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law? Yes. And I need your name and address for the record. It's Ryan Tag. And we're at 3207 Tina, T-I-N-A Circle. Uh, New Lenox, Illinois 60451. Okay, do you have any comments you'd like to make? 
I'm sorry, was that for me? Yes, is that how yes. you Yeah, I mean, the child is over, well over 20 years old now, and it's due to the pediatric drugs to um, somewhat drastically deteriorate away, and it will lead to opening and every couple of bit. And it's actually true that if you look at the lot of the way, if the animal goes closer to the lot line, the more work it poses, we're actually feeling the outside corner back fairly Any other comments, sir? And like I said, we're trying to make improvements and uh, upgrade the process. So. All right, thank you. Any questions or comments by the board? I have one. This is Bob. Uh, sir, I assume that uh, what you propose is uh, not objected to by your immediate neighbor? Yeah, the, the immediate neighbor that it affects, their name is uh, Dell and Vicki, and we, we've talked to them extensively about this, and we didn't really have time to prepare a letter or anything like that, but they were more, more than willing to uh, come to our behalf or whatever needed. They have no objections to it whatsoever, and if you would like uh, some type of a letter, I'd be more than happy to ask them to do that on our behalf. So. I doubt that's necessary. If they objected, they probably would have let us know by now. Yeah, no, it's been out there for a while. So. Any other questions or comments by the board? Is there anyone online who wishes to speak in favor or in opposition? We have no callers, Mr. Chairman. There are no comments. The motion will be in order. The chair closes the table to the floor. The floor and ask for a motion. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. We have a motion to second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Mr. Riggs. Aye. Ms. Stafford. Aye. Mr. Alessio. Aye. Mr. McCauley. Mr. Noctree? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Okay. All right. Mr. Chairman, uh, we're still trying to get the uh, caller online for 2020-25. Um, we are suggesting that uh, we could bring Mr. Hansen back at this point. Yeah, good, uh, good afternoon sure. again. Party? Yeah, I've, I've met with Jim Torrey, and Jim Torrey has spoken with my client, and we've clarified uh, and understand that the uh, necessary spaces here will be at half pilot rate. So uh, the matter is fine, and if we're okay with the changed uh, conditions as Mr. Uh, Jackson outlined, then I'd ask you you proceed with a, a vote today. Everything's all cleared up? Yes, sir. Okay, we've had the discussion. Is there, is there anyone online wishing to speak in favor or opposition? Are there any further questions by the board? If not, Chair, close the petition to the floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. I will second it. This is Bob. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Noctree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Ms. Stafford? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is that it on the petitions? Oh, enjoy. Okay, so um, we can't raise the um, petitioner for 2025 on the uh, phone. You want to table that or? Was there, was there a timing issue with these folks? Do we know? I don't know. They just did pull the board on the phone, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
we, d we didn't have any callers in on this, did we? No. Everybody, hold on. We're just having a discussion here. Um, Can we proceed with that petition? It's at the pleasure of the board. We can proceed uh, with this petition. Uh, you of proceed course. with it? Yeah. Okay, read the petition. Okay, 2020-25, uh, the applicant in this matter is Valentine uh, Honore, uh, who is also the owner, location 1113 and 1115 Cutter Avenue. The request is for a series of variations to allow construction of two single family houses on two undersized lots that are in common ownership. The applicant is requesting a series of variations to allow construction of two single family houses on two undersized lots that are in common ownership. Located at 1113 through 1115 Cutter Avenue, the Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decision for this request. Requested variations from the Zoning Board of Appeals includes a variation to reduce the minimum lot size from 7,500 square feet to 4,800 square feet a variation to reduce the minimum lot width from 60 feet to 50 feet, a variation to reduce the front yard setback from 30 feet to 25 feet, a variation to reduce one of the side yard setbacks from eight feet to six feet, a variation to reduce the sum of side yard setbacks from 20 feet to 19 feet. Under site specific information, the two lots are zoned R2 single family residential Joliet. Each lot is 4,802.5 square feet in size with 50 feet of frontage. The lot, like most lots in the neighborhood, is non-conforming to the yard and lot requirements for the R2 single family residential zoning district. The Zoning Board of Appeals reviewed and approved a similar petition uh, for these lots in November of 2007. The petition did not include a variation to reduce the sum of side yard setbacks and the site plan varied in that the plans included detached garages. The two houses that were proposed at that time were never constructed. Under surrounding zoning land use and character, the surrounding parcels and majority of the neighborhood are zoned R2 single family residential. The neighborhood consists of one to two uh, one to two story single family homes. Most of the houses in this neighborhood are on non-conforming parcels. Applicable regulations, section 47-6.2, permitted pr principal uses. Section 47-6.4, yard and lot requirements. Section 47-17.1, paragraph five, general regulations. Section 47-19.8, Finding a fact supporting a variation referred to the attachment. Under general discussion, the subject properties have been vacant for several years. Both lots are held in common ownership. The property owner seeks these variances in order to build a two-story single family home on each lot, which are non-conforming lots of record in the R2 single family zoning district. Conceptual site plan, elevations, and floor plans can be found as an attachment to the staff report. Each house will have three bedrooms and two and a half baths, as well as covered front porch and an attached garage. The overall house plan will be the same for both homes, but reversed in layout. In addition, the front elevations will vary in detail in order to comply with the city's anti-monotony standards. The size of the proposed homes and lot coverage are similar to, those, to other houses and lot coverage in this area. The property will be subject to the city's landscaping requirements for single family homes, as well as the anti-monotony standards for new single family home construction and subdivision regulations, including the provision of sidewalks. If the zoning board desires to approve these variances, the following conditions shall be included. Number one, that the final site plans, elevations, and floor plans of these two houses shall be substantially similar to the conceptual site plans. Elevations and floor plans that were submitted with this petition. Number two, that a paved driveway shall be installed and maintained. Number three, 
The property shall comply with the city's landscape requirements for a single family house, which can be found in section 47-15E paragraph three of the zoning ordinance. Number four, that the two single family houses shall not have substantially similar front elevations or facades as outlined in section 47-17.30, residential construction, anti-monotony of the zoning ordinance. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, under the anti-monotony standards, are these houses gonna be identical? Just how broad is that? So with the anti-monotony standards, there is an allowance for reverse elevations. Uh, so you can have two houses that are um, uh, similar in design, uh, but the reverse elevation would be the garages on different sides of, of, the, uh, of the house. Okay, no, it, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is the petitioner online here? Petitioner here, but, Valentin Honore. But Mr. Chairman, this is the one we, we do not have. The, we oh, don't, we don't have, have online. Okay, chairman. my yeah. apologies. Uh, is there any questions by the staff um, and by the uh, board? Yeah, I, I have a question for the staff. Uh, this is Bob. Uh, Kendall, would it be possible at all for anything to be built on this on these two lots that would not require variation? It seems to me that. Um, correct, yes. Yes, because they are non-conforming. And new construction um, is uh, required to adhere to the current regulations, so anything that would be constructed would require a, a, a variance. Well, if I can make a comment, that's, that's very true, but the one word that's left out of here is the word legal. They're all legal non-conforming uses because of the zoning. Correct, yeah, legal, legal non-conforming. Keep that in mind when you're yeah. making your uh, uh, decision. Any other questions? Do we have anyone online in favor? There's no one online. Chair then closes petition and asks the board for discussion and a motion. This is Bob. I move that we approve the petition. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Noctree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next section, new business, no public hearing. We have no items. Um, our next section is for public comments. Uh, this section is for anyone wanting to speak regarding a non-agenda item. Our four minute rule is in effect and I do believe that we don't have any callers for public comments. Okay, so a motion to adjourn would be in order. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Do we have a second to adjourn the meeting? Yeah, that was, I did it. I tried to. This is Bob. Oh, okay, fine. We have a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. Pull the board. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Noctree? Yes, indeed. Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. And I would like to. Uh, informed the board that Mr. Riggs was in the hospital recently recovering from pneumonia under fear that he might have had the COVID-19, but apparently he didn't. But I'll keep my six feet away from him anyway. <laughs> Thank That's you. it. Thank yeah. you.